Coach Knight. We're going to get you going live here right now. But uh, hey, welcome. First thing, sir, welcome to, uh, I don't know, a conversation. I just like to have conversations with folks. But first things first, I love your shirt. Do you know, here, I just got to tell you this. He passed away February yeah. 11, 2016. Yeah. Do you know who was born February 12, 2016? You were, huh? My, oh, my kid. My kid was. My, your, my oh, son. your kid was? Okay. Yeah. He was born. They, like, passed in the night, dude. Really? What was, uh, is that your son named Ferd? Yeah, or? Ferdinand. Ferdinand and him, they passed in the night. Seriously. Like, I remember hearing the news of his passing, and it was right as I was getting my wife all lined up for, like, uh, they, they were going to induce her, and we were at Akron, uh, Akron City. And uh, and then that, that news came down, but it was just like, you're so overwhelmed in that situation. You're just like, I mean, I couldn't even like go in. Um, I watched this real cool tribute somebody do, did to him with a Drake song to it. Mm. You ever seen that one? Jeez, uh, it is. I'll have to shoot it to you. Yeah, just you, like, I've probably seen it, but you know that was a while ago. But yeah, like, yeah. and it. It had the uh, the match with him and Bill Spleet. His state final was oh, in it. Oh, yeah. His pride thing when he picked Fedor up and they did a flip yeah. and Fedor landed on his head. Um, but yeah, Kevin Randleman, dude. Did they, I mean, not and a good dude too. Right. Randleman told me in that Fedor match that he the reason why he didn't he thought he like died. Like, the way he slammed that dude, that's why, like, you saw Random and pause. So he didn't finish the match. He didn't get on and start dominating him because he just kind of stopped. He thought the ref was going to, like, stop it. Well, then, then he, what did he, he armbarred him, didn't he? Yeah, so because he paused. Like, Random paused. So after he slammed him, he's like, oh, this is going to be it. And he paused, and then Vudor was, you know, he caught fought, the he, he rolled through the position and caught him in an armbar, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you think yeah. someone's dead though, especially if you're random and you've been doing and you've been killing people like that, like really yeah. hurting people for years in amateur wrestling. You know, I mean, yeah. even if you look at those old Ohio State like uh, those highlight videos, like some, the stuff he was doing is still. It's like not even duplicated even still today. Can't do it. I'm telling it's you, man. Unreal. I'm the one where he's got a one, what Iowa guy's got him dead to rights, and the guy's got him bowed down on a single leg, like, and he shoved the guy off. Michael picked him. Yep. Oh my Bart god. Chelsby. Bart Chelsby. Bart That freak. was at national duels. It was twice. Okay. Now he did it at national duels. We we're at Michigan, and Bart. It, that one was more impressive. You got to see that video because after he, like Bart Chelsby, went to ankle pick him. Then he pushed the elbow and then wound up in this position. And I don't know how he lifted Bart Chelsvig up from a split. It was the most impressive physical feat I've ever seen in my life. And Chelsvig was like, he was like third in the country, wasn't he? Yeah, he just couldn't <laughs> beat Randall. That was He's it. good. Just couldn't beat Randall. He's really good. <laughs> it's like unreal. And I think he had the Brinzer had the same problem. Brinzer yeah, couldn't yeah, beat Randall either. <laughs> like uh, on that highlight video, Randall was also telling me like, on the highlight, you see Ray Brinzer whisper something in his ear. And we asked, he's like, what'd he say? He's like, he said to him, like, you know, that's, you know, that should be mine. Like the, the plaque. And it was like, dude, he beat you in the turn. What do you mean? <laughs> it should be yours. Dude, he chest locked him and like power bond, like threw him in the air. Dude, he he went, he went 10 feet in the air. I'm not, that's not an exaggeration. <laughs> no, no, none of it is. That's he the front thing chest wrapped him and just lifted him up and threw him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ray Brins is a mutant too. I know. <laughs> it's unreal, man. And it, you know what I mean? Like, and it was Iowa Ray Brins or not Oklahoma State Ray Brins So it was like him later on in his career too. Is the other wild yeah, thing like, about it. Yeah, a little it. more focused and like not like committing to like, like, you could tell he was really committed to like the gave away almost. Yeah. No, yeah. He, he, he changed over. And then, you know, there's been a couple weird things like that. I think the Mako, Mako went the opposite way, though. Mako yeah. went from Iowa to Oklahoma State. But, like, if you see, you've seen some weird some weird transfers, some weird changeovers, and they don't – it's like the jury's out if they work or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, it, yeah. I mean, those two, those two guys, we're talking about two of the best talents, I mean, historically in the last 30, 40 years in wrestling, I think. If you talk Ray Brinzer and Steve Mako, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're unreal. Totally. Totally. Michael was just like a force, like just a tank that you just couldn't penetrate. 
Yeah. Um, you know what? Somebody, I think it was Dave Range, put out a uh, he put out a old clipping, an old Michigan dual meet with you guys, and you were, yeah, were you yeah, sixty seven yeah, yeah. or seventy seven in it. Yeah, I wrestled sixty seven in that duel. You and, won, uh, didn't you? Won, didn't you? Yeah, like you know what was happening is uh, Charlie and Charlie lost to Lequeur. Charlie Bex lost to Lequeur, and Smitty lost to uh, Jeff Catcherbone, right? And we just were like, we were on like a crazy road trip too. And then some, had, we still weren't out of the match, but I caught this dude and pinned him and it kept us all, it kept us in the match. I remember getting this dude and, and, and getting a pin and it kept us in the match because we just were, you know, dudes were wrestling like turds a little bit that day. And then uh, we almost came back and beat them in that duel. And but, was, uh, yeah. was range in the duel? I can't even remember. No, 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 no. He just, this is something he found. Range had been gone for a while. Yeah, that was, say, that he's was, a lot uh, older than you. He was five years older than you? Yeah, he, we were crisscrossing. I was coming in, he was going out. Okay, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I saw that and I was looking at it. Now, Will, you qualified. Here, here's the crazy thing, your story. What's crazy about you is you qualified for the NCAAs at three weights? Uh, Two, yeah, so, 67 what? and 190. <laughs> I thought you qualified at seventy seven for some reason. Well, well, I, well let me, I, I placed the Big Tens at one ninety. They didn't take like today. I would have qualified, but in today's rules, but I was eighth at the Big Ten at one ninety. And uh, yeah, and uh, top seven qualified. Weighed, yeah, and then I, I weighed probably about one. You know, one day I'll tell you the the, the full story of that one. But I weighed about one sixty seven. You know, about 65 doing that. And then my senior year, I wrestled 67 to third in the Big Ten. Okay. That's third in the Big Ten. <laughs> and then, you, yeah. so you qualified at 67 and 77 or 67 and 90? I, I qualified just the one time and I placed twice. Okay. Got it. Yeah. But you wrestled. What were the weights you wrestled? Oh, I wrestled I wrestled every weight other than 18 and heavyweight. So I wrestled uh, 26, 30. It was uh, 34 at the time. I wrestled 42, I wrestled 50, I wrestled 58, I wrestled 167, I wrestled 77 and 190, and I wrestled five in one season. I wrestled five in one season. I don't know. I mean, obviously now today, they have this weight and this growth plan, like kind of like similar to the high school thing. And I don't yeah, like yeah. by the rules, I don't think you could wrestle five weights in it. Unless you yeah. were like somebody who started out at 70, went up to 82, 70, 82, 95, 220, you know what I mean? Growth spurt, yeah. something. I wrestled 34 against uh, Dan Carstelli at Cleveland State as a dual meet, and then I wrestled 190 to Big Tens. Oh, my and God. Took eighth place, yeah. You started out at 34? Yeah, yeah. First duel of the season. We wrestled Cleveland State, and uh, – Technically, at the, at those points, you got weight. You got three pounds, so it was thirty seven. You know, like you got weight, and then it went they down. They took it away, yeah. So uh, yeah, so I wrestled. Uh, sorry, I wrestled uh, one thirty four against Cleveland State. Then I wrestled one forty two at the Ohio Open. Then I didn't wrestle. I didn't wrestle. Uh, then I wrestled one fifty somewhere. Like it was. Or I weighed in at 150 and his road trip to Oregon. Then I wrestled 158 in a dual meet against Cal State Fullerton. Then Mitch Clark became ineligible over winter break. So he was our 67. So then I was just became the 67 pounder. Jesus, please. And then <laughs> and then after that, I lost a wrestle off late in the season at 67 to Eric Odita. And then uh Russ took some extra people to Iowa for Big Tens because our heavyweight Rick Berlinski was cutting down to 190, and because uh, Nick Nutter had read or no Nick Nutter had cut down to 77, that's what happened. So 90 was vacated, and then uh, but Berlinski snapped in that Iowa room. It was 120 degrees. Saw that everybody, he snapped and said, "Russ, I'm going heavyweight." And then Russ looked at me and said, "Will." Uh, just keep drinking water. All you had to do, all I had to do, was weigh one sixty-seven point one to go one ninety, and then 
I was in the Iowa room sweating and drinking a gallon full of water. Trainer kept bringing me a gallon of water. I would drink it, sweat, check my weight, drink it, sweat, just stay in and just kept checking my weight. And I weighed in at like 168. Jesus. And wrestled uh, and in place. the Big Ten. And yeah. placed in the Big Ten. <laughs> and then I took, yeah, I won to be a kid from Purdue. And then uh, I was wrestling a kid from uh, Minnesota to go to Nationals. He was a third-rate guy, and I was losing to him 2-1 in the second period, and I was I, I was on top, and I was power half in this dude. He was going over his whippering. I remember uh, Mike Schick and Jim Jordan were waving me. I was, like, hitting his power half. I was turning this dude, and uh, I just kind of slipped off. He caught me, and then he just wound up beating me, but he only measured me. It was the third-rank guy in the Big Ten, and I was I had him. I was, I was about to beat him the go. And then, uh, so the funny thing about the end of that story is, uh, so then I had to go weigh in with all the big guys. And then, so we get down to, uh, we're in the Iowa wrestling room and Tom Brands is yelling out. He's like, night 190, Ohio State, check and wait. So Gable and Brands are running weigh-ins. So I tell Russ, I said, Russ, you got to go with me. There's no way I'm going to weigh 168. So then I go down there. And like I said, Tom Brown's like, night, Ohio State. <laughs> and then I, I go down and I get on the scale. I weighed 160. And no then way. I got off the scale. Russ and Gable said something. And I'm wrestling the next day at uh, for seventh day. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So um, you finished. When did you graduate from Ohio State? 96. So 96. Okay. When did you graduate from Shaker Heights? 91. You never qualified for the state tournament? Did not. Did not. Qualified for the NCAA tournament. I was a victim of the grinder. I was a uh, victim of the mentor meat grinder. There was five of us. I was ranked 16th in the state. Five of us, five or six of us were at mentor, and they only took three out. What what were they thinking then? Like, yeah. Like, where yeah. were they taking more people out of? It, it was, uh, it was. I remember I, I beat this kid. I tech followed this kid from Cloverleaf early in the season, and he was the fifth place placer at his district, made the state. So it was Medina area or something, like whatever that, it was a down south one that took five. Akron it was like a random. It was always the Division Two one, I remember. Yeah, there was like the Cloverleaf it was this one year, but I know he made it to state. He took fifth. At his district. Unreal, dude. And our district had Gustavich, who was ranked second in the state. And we had Tim Pluhar and and Jerome from St. Joe's and Un- Jones like, from Heights. If you look like, at some have- of those old, like who you came up through with in Northeast Ohio, Northeast Ohio was just incredible, man. It's just like, you just said Carcelli. But Dan Carcelli was yep. just like, he was just like another Northeast Ohio guy. I mean, he was Just tough, another dude. Just another just, dude. Just another dude. And it's like, they had Another all these guys, man. And then you were at the when Walsh really started to get good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like what's Malika a year younger than you? Malika, we're the same age. Same age. So he's Malika, a ninety one yeah. dad. They were they were just starting to get like really good. Yeah, he was that was this the beginning. I remember his sophomore year, we were at we were at sectionals with them. It was crazy. Our sectional was crazy. And uh, it had Maple and so- Old Maple and Old Solon and Old Clevelandites and Old Shaw. Like these, t- I'm telling you, man, killer, bro. And Malika, like I remember he pinned one of our kids on our team. And i never seen this kid get, he's like our team cat. I've never seen him get thrown like that. Like, that. I was like, oh, my God. And I never knew who Marcus Malika was. He was a sophomore, won the sectional. And that tough, it was a tough, super tough sectional. And then, uh, you know. And the rest is history. And I was like, oh, now it's Dan Lee Master was at my, uh, like, I remember my freshman year, Dan Lee Master was at 106 with me. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. It, yeah, it was 103 then. Yeah. But yeah, Lee Master, like, that team was crazy, man. That was the beginning. Lee Master, Malika. So fast forward from 1991 to 29 years. Did you see your, 29 yeah. years later, did you see yourself yeah. as a head high school coach, Will, ever? I did not. I thought I was going to be like, I don't know where I was going to be. I, th- I figured I'd be just running some, you know, doing some business with my dad, going to California, trying to make movies or something. And which, you know, I'm still going to be still working on doing, but you know, it's, uh, no, being a head coach. No, I did. 
Didn't at all. You know, it's just like when you look at it, it's the amount of time that you guys put in is just insane. And Shaker's one of those districts. It's right on the fringe. You know what I mean? Shaker was an old suburb. And now it's it's kind of like a mixed suburb now. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's on the yeah, it borders it's, Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's the inner ring, and I call it, um, you know, like it's it's kind of a super famous place, you know, and we people know about Shaker Heights. It has a huge history. Like, whatever that, uh, what is that that new hot show, uh, Million Little Fires, or what is that little fire? What is that uh, show that's on? Uh, with Reese Witherspoon and it's like, whatever, like it's, um, the, uh, writers from Shaker and just partially about Shaker and, and, uh, creator of how I met your mother's from Shaker. He put one of my Shaker wrestling t-shirts on the show. And yeah. It's, um, uh, is kid Cuddy's from Shaker too, right? He is. And so was, uh, so was machine gun Kelly. Machine gun Kelly's from Shaker. He is. He is. Dude. He's huge now. Yeah. Have you seen yeah. the movie he was in the, uh, the Motley Crue movie? Yeah, yeah. Like Machine Gun Kelly actually is not uh, not he's his cousin. Are you serious? Yeah, it's like yeah. <laughs> Dude, everybody <laughs> knows everybody. I love it. Uh, okay, so here's the other thing. What's crazy about you guys is you know. So you're this. You're what is the boulevard when you drive out of Cleveland? Is it Shaker Boulevard? What is the road yeah. with the like, like the states on it? It says. Uh, well, there's. It's like they all go like everything directs you. Every from the east side, every major street, when you head west, will get you downtown eventually. So we have Chagrin that turns into Kinsman, and that takes you downtown. And we have Van Aken Boulevard that takes you down to Shaker Square. And we have Shaker Boulevard that runs down. Like, so they all can, you can whittle your way east if you head down any of those those major uh, arteries, as they say. One of Dude, some of them, there's still like eight and ten acre estates in the middle of Shaker Heights. Yeah, that's I'm not Shaker, making that up, right? Boulevard. Yeah, that's where like uh, there's uh, we kind of have this millionaires row. That's where. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, like uh, we have the the <laughs> the Goldbergs and Geraldo lives over there now. Uh, Geraldo Rivera. Geraldo Rivera. He went to high school with. Uh, I went to high school with his wife. No way. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. I went, man. I I kicked to Geraldo a couple times. Now you know he works. Well, you know he works for Fox News sometimes, right? I know, I know. You know, so oh, is he funny. okay? Is he okay? I'm asking. Is he okay? He, he told me about Hannity. He told me about Sean Hannity. We will leave it at that. <laughs> okay, okay, oh, okay. So Shaker is a super diverse place. I guess the whole point of it's a super diverse place. It's yeah. right on the fringe of East Cleveland, East Side of Cleveland, and and then you know it bridges out to us then because you guys it's are on two seventy loop, yeah. right? Two seventy one, two seventy one. Yeah, pretty much. Beach is your is yeah. your eastern border right? Yeah. Okay. So it's a just it's a really unique place. It's a really cool place. Yeah. Um, is uh, what is the Kane Park? Is Kane Park in Shaker? No, that's in Cleveland Heights. That's Dude, next, one like, of the coolest like Cleveland Heights in the East Cleveland. Be, best concert venue I've ever been to. Yeah, it's it's great. Isn't that great? Dude, it's it's unreal. It's like, this ravine, and it's an amphitheater. It's like amazing. Right, I've been there last year. I went and saw like, like some cheesy group. Uh, Dude, some I saw cheesy Connie 80s. Crows there. It was amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. Kane Park is a hidden gem. Like totally, hundred percent. If, if there's a group that you like and you know that they're going to Kane Park, go and go, like go. It's unreal. It's great. So it's a real cool area because then Kane Park's right by Melt too. There's a Melt right there too. Yep, it's right around oh, the block. Oh man, yep. it's a really cool area. And then Shaker. And then Cleveland Heights, and then there's like University Heights, Richmond Heights. That's all over East Side by you guys, right? Yep. John Carroll, yep. Notre Dame College, South Euclid, Lindhurst. That's all in your YouTube. Beachwood. Yeah. Yep. Beachwood borders us. Okay. You guys border Beachwood. Okay. Yeah, that's that's our East border. Got your East. Okay. Okay. So you have, you got you guys had one state qualifier this year, right? Yeah. Yeah. What was he a runner up last year? Najee Lockett was a runner up. Yeah, yeah, he was a runner-up. He uh, he had transferred back from St. Ignatius, um, and he, I had been coaching him since he was eight years old, and then, uh, you know, I don't know what, what made them go to Ignatius, but it's what it is. But he uh, made his way back, kind and uh, 
kind of had some limited time getting him. Like uh, there was some some habits that we had to work through, some bad habits he had that we had to get through. And uh, so last year was just kind of getting to know him again. And then uh, the summer we had a pretty good off season, but uh, you know we were we were going well. We just were going well, but he was just kind of in between, in between weights a little bit. Yeah, he's a he's a kind of a, a weird tweener right now. Is he a fifty seven in college right now? If he walked into a college, because when we decided to go down to sixty, when I saw like it got to a point where I saw him at fifty seven, like, he's right, he's close. He could probably do one year at fifty seven if he had to. And he's got to go right away because he's going to Cornell, right? Yeah, but but I think uh, yeah, yep. Um, well, I don't know about is. you, but I'm I was uh, I I just barely passed. Well, I didn't barely, but I passed the NCAA clearinghouse. Um, <laughs> and I know my brother Chad was a prop. Eric Burnett was a prop. Were you a prop too? I was not. I I was a try. I had to walk on. I tried out. You told me you you used to have to go work out in the, uh, what do you call it? You had to work out in the the, the lounge. The the study rooms, you know, between the girl there. You know how they had at a dorms, they had like a study room in between the girl's side and the boy's side. And uh, we would move tables. There was this guy from like um, Mommy that wrestled, but doing trying out, but he was on our floor. He would come work out with me. Anyone that wrestled that wasn't on the team, I would grab, I would sneak into the wrestling, to a house, a wrestle room. And just just work out with whoever, and uh, I wound up just being, you know, I I wrestled my tail off at the Ohio Open. I was I was a match away. I was two matches away from placing. Like it was only like me and Charlie Bex were the only ones. Like Charlie Bex, we both lost the same round, and Jay Michael. Study I, uh, study lunch training. Yeah, just yeah. Study lunch training. Yeah, study lunch training. I love yeah. it. I love, yeah. So you weren't a prop; you had to walk on. <laughs> No, I had to try out. Yeah. Like, so here's the other crazy thing. Yeah. You had no – like you really had no credentials for them to no, be like, oh, no, no, we want you. No. I made the junior national team. Uh, but I I contacted all the coaches. I was uh, I was close to going to Michigan because I, I got in to Michigan. I got into Miami of Ohio and OU. And I was kind of saying who was the first one that was going to let me get on their team – but the Miami of Ohio coach just didn't get back to me. I just, you know, I just sent him a message or just, you know, you would send him a letter and call him. He never got back. You sent him Michigan. a letter. I love it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, <laughs> uh, mail it. <laughs> totally, yeah, totally. That's what I had to do. It's so and awesome. Uh, 1991, you're mailing letters. I love it. Yeah, right. These so kids then, just no, don't know, no, do no, they, Will? They just don't know, do they? No, no. So no one got back to me. So then I, um, uh, but... You know when I, you know, one made what made me go to, go to Ohio State was Michigan called me, so I was going to go in there kind of on like a academic probationary thing. I mean, you had to really have like a four, you had to have crazy grades to get in there. But I got in, but I had to come in like in a summer school program or something. Okay, so you had stuff then, that you actually had to do. Yeah, and then uh, something, but I just remember them telling me that, like, they called me and told me, like, yeah, you're in, but uh, and then they're saying how going to cost $32,000 and and I, at that time Ohio State cost like $6,000 and That's you know no coincidentally I was watching so here's an interesting story I was I was watching the national tournament on delay and it was Randleman's uh sophomore year right it was uh no sorry it was freshman year redshirt freshman year and he got pinned by Mark Riley got chin whip and I remember chin whip got chin whip and I remember I knew I knew I was familiar with him from high school I got a million Randleman stories but then, when I when I when I show up in the fall, right, I track I you know track down the Russ, and he's like, well, you, we should see how you're gonna do it at Ohio Open. I talked to Jim Jordan. We'll see how you're gonna do it at Ohio Open. And then I go into my first class after I've been running the stadium. I will go and run the stadium because it's open there. I ride my bike to the stadium and run it every morning at like eight o'clock, right? And I remember it only took me eight minutes to get around because I look on the clock. I'll start at eight and I'll be done at. 808 right <laughs> so so then uh my first economic class econ i'm dressed up day one and guess who comes into the class but late is kevin randall right <laughs> so uh so when i uh i see him i'm like oh you know i gotta go talk you know i gotta talk to him man so at the end of class i go up and talk to him i say hey man you kevin randall he's like i know who you are 
And I was like, what? And he's like, he's like, you beat my cousin. Like I, I had beat a kid from Sandusky in the Brettsfield semis my junior year to make it to the finals, right? And uh and he was from Sandusky, and Random was there. I didn't know. He's like, You beat my cousin, man. I was like, Oh, well, you know, <laughs> and I said, Well, I'm trying to walk on the team and you know, what do I gotta do? He's like, Well, first of all, you gotta go run the stadium every day. I said, I do that. He's like, How fast you do it? I said, like eight minutes. He's like, No, you don't, you lie. And I was like, I, I do it every day, right? I said, I eight minutes. I don't I do it eight minutes. And then uh he's like, All right, you know what? Come with me right now. So he took me to St. John Arena and we go up into their training room. He knows all these girls, the gymnasts were practicing in there. He's a superstar, right? He's just rolling in there. <laughs> and then uh and I remember uh so then I remember saying, like, man, random, and you know, I saw you on that national championship, man. I said, that's what made me come. He's like, I'm gonna excuse my lady's like, that shit ain't gonna happen again. Right? <laughs> he looked at me dead in the face and said, that ain't gonna happen again. I was like, oh. I said, you, you're the man. And then, uh, so he puts me through an Ubi workout, which is the arm workout for 10 minutes. I'm in my dress clothes. For their first day of school, he puts me through a workout. And uh, it's one of the famous Coleman Randleman and Ubi workouts you see on the on the highlight video. The thing. The and then, uh, yeah, bike. yeah, yeah. He puts me through one. I'm wearing some denim, denim outfit, you know, some classic 90s hip-hop looking outfit. And he... Uh, <laughs> And then after I finished, he's like, oh, I'm going to talk to Russ for you. But then that none came of that. I just ultimately had to uh, go to the – they just kept telling me, let's see how you do at the Ohio Open. And uh, I almost beat Jay Michael. I was Dave Range was coaching me. I almost beat Jay Michael. And then Jim Jordan was coaching him. And then I go up to Jim afterwards. He's like, you know, I think we're going to let you on the team. You look really good, you know. But I wouldn't eliminate. I was like, just second round, whatever. And I won a couple more matches. And I lost to Pat Birdies. Pat Birdies beat me. And then he went on and took like third at the tournament. And that was that. So that that eventually is what got you on the team. Um, when you look at you know like now when you're guiding kids to get on teams, you got a kid who's going to Cornell, right? You've had a yeah. couple other guys who've gone and wrestled other different places from Shaker. Um, how do you try and guide kids to to college? And what's the message? And and what do you want kids to get out of wrestling at Shaker Heights? What I it, it's kind of a uh, it's hard for me to tell a kid not to go shoot for their dreams, you know what I'm saying? Like to try and be a D1 wrestler and but the commitment is so much. Like it's just like like for instance Javon, I was trying to give Javon Jones some advice about possibly wrestling somewhere smaller because I knew how smart he was and I was trying to direct him to somewhere like Case Western and you know like where I was like man, you can go there be a most all American national champ and get a great like engineering degree or something, you know what I mean? Like and and but he wanted to be a D1 wrestler so badly. And, you know, they gave him a great offer, you know, at Northern Illinois. And uh, but who am I to deny? Who am I to tell him to not go after that? But uh, but I was hoping. But one thing I did tell him, I said, look, don't just let wrestling use every bit of you either. You got to take part of advantage of your education that you're getting for part of the scholarship. And and that is what I do tell these kids, which. You know, like you have to take advantage of that education that you're getting too, you know, because you understand the D1 commitment, but you have to also be prepared to take advantage of your education you're getting. And then what degree do you have from Ohio State? I have a degree in history. History degree? Okay. You and Eric yeah. Burnett have the, you guys are the, uh, the two guys with degrees who use their degrees and no way to what they have their degree for. He has a geography oh. degree. He can't even read. He yeah, can't right. even read Google Maps. <laughs> Are you surprised? No, no. I mean, I knew, I knew I was going to be doing something different. I mean, looking back on it, I, I wish I, you know, I wish I studied like journalism. I wanted to maybe should have minored in journalism or something, and and uh, yeah, that's something I look at. And as you see, I'm, I'm like kind of history buff of a lot of things that I'm involved in, so it, it's still working out for me. Yeah, tell me about what are you doing now. You're always making, you always got a project going on. Um, I recently watched your movie, The Third Day, the Ohio State uh, movie from the, was it 2004 season when they took third in the country and were like last well, in the yeah. Big Ten? Yeah, that was, um, I'll send you a link for that. You got to get some people. I got a hundred oh, copies. I, I got the DVD. I mean, 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I want to say I want people to have. I have I, I have about a hundred DVDs. They're still original. I'll even autograph. Do you do you need some DVDs? I have some sitting here. If you want, to, I mean, if you want to distribute them, I could never do do much with that's them. That's right. You still got some too. Yeah, <laughs> I got DVDs. If you want them, like we'll put a link up. Like we we'll, we got to sell this thing, man. We'll, you know, we got to sell this. Thing. Sure, but t tell me about like what what have you done since then? Like, because I know that like dude, that was like you. Here's the thing. You hit right before the internet really took off in social media. You made that two, three years early from when it could have got on Flow Wrestling. It could have got, it could have blown up on YouTube. Um, you know, you could have refined it and done editing and done different stuff yeah. with it, whatever it may be, because you had already had the footage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you missed, you missed, dude, by like 24 months, 36 months at the most. Would you agree with that? I do, but you, you, you know what? You know where I'm coming back, though? I'm doing a documentary on the history of Ohio high school wrestling. Okay. And it's going to be, it's not going to be a two hour, it's got to be, it's going to have to be elaborate. And, you know, it's crazy some of the, you know, I want to I wanna kind of do a thing with Steve Burr in this. I have a lot of footage from him in high school and us at these events and, and at the Olympic Training Center, I got some stuff that added at the New York AC. I have some really cool stuff with Burnett coaching and things. And, and I have a way to tell the story. And I've, I've been trying to work with Brian Brakeman on, an, on the thing to do it through that, to do it through the Brakeman Report. So it's going to be uh, – and I was uh, – and going off of that, I, I was talking to Sonny Marchetti yesterday. I know we wound up talking about Ohio High School Wrestling for two hours. And I was like, you know what? I'm decided we decide we're putting together a podcast and we're talking about we're talk, we're gonna do a podcast talking about real rest like we're gonna do a wrestling podcast a little different, not gonna be stale. We're gonna, you know, we have some it's it's gonna be cool. This this podcast I put together about wrestling. I think that's where we're springboarding from this. I think that this is you know, I don't have like a name for it or anything, but I think this turns into like a, this is just a conversation, it's not really an interview. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think, and you know, I delivered on many different uh, platforms. I haven't put it on any of the like um, Spotify or anything like that, or iTunes or anything like that. But I think that, that that's eventually where we go with this. What I'm doing now, you know what I mean? I think you just you jump into it. There doesn't have to be a ton of editing and a bunch of. You know Let's what I mean? do it. Yeah, I mean that's that's Let's what I'm saying. It. This jumps off into that, and I've just been doing them over this break, and I figured out like, yeah, I, I just it's more you know like. I don't really mind interrupting you because it's a, it's us having a conversation and sometimes that'll happen in yeah. a conversation. I feel bad in an interview when I interrupt you because I'm like, no, this is their time for me to ask the question and let them talk, but this is a conversation. And it's yeah. all right if you cut me off. I'm okay, I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that. Yeah. <laughs> you get my point. First like, of all, my, what, uh, one thing, I, before we continue, all right, I always got to get the Miller connection together, okay? Zeb is your, I mean, uh, Bird is your oldest brother, right? Bird's my oldest brother. Bird's ten years older than I am. I've never met Bird. He was like, oh, I you're said, okay. He was on his way out. You're gonna be okay. Don't worry about that. <laughs> and now, Chad. Chad, and you guys were teammates for at least a year or two. Yes, he had the messed up nose. He had to get his nose uh, cauterized. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember he showed up with a black middle, like one of his noses, like black, looked like. Like a cartoon where it's like like a firecracker like blew up in his yeah, nose. Yeah, cauterized his nose. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I must tell you, Chad and his wife are two of my favorite people in the world. They're really they nice just, people. They're really they, good people. They are really great people. Yeah, and then I have a brother Tate as well, who's two years older than me. And so those three. Now, who's Buck? Who's Buck? Buck is my cousin. That's my, what I thought. Okay. My dad's oldest brother, because Buck was one of your teammates too. Yes, for for that one semester. Buck was tough, he had, dude. He had the best freaking front head. Like I was shoot in on him when I first got on the team. I, I did. I got on the team, and you know, you had limited workout partners as a walk on. So it was just like all the guys who, you know, fresh. Like so, I I had to rotate with Buck a lot. And I remember the first time I shot in. It was the first time I felt my head almost got pinched off by his front head lock. Yeah, he was. <laughs> it was. He understands so learned, front headlock pressure. Yes, I learned quick how to get out of front headlock. Pressure. Yeah, he's a uh, contractor now. Buck is like a master nice. craftsman and a woodworker. 
His dad is my dad's oldest brother. Okay. Okay, and then their dad is Ferdinand as well. Oh. So my grandpa and my great-grandpa were Ferdinand as well. Good. And then my brother Tate, who's two years older than me, has a son, Wyatt, who won the district this year at 182, and he qualified for the state for Oak Harbor, but he isn't going to get the wrestle. And then I have a sister who's uh, seven years older than me. Okay, so let's just talk about that. Let's 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 go into cancellation. Yes. Where were you guys? Where was Najee? Where were you? What were you guys doing when it came down? It was a Thursday before the tournament was now moved to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Where were where were where were you guys? So so the Wednesday we do our final workout because I kind of uh, I kind of explained to him I had to break down some things about what people were doing to him wrestling wise, how guys were stalling against him and kind of running and playing edges. So we went over these strategies because I knew what the playbook was for him, like what people were going to be doing. So we broke down some things and then we drilled and we had the best workout that I've ever had with this kid since I've been coaching for 10 years. And I felt he was so prepared and his weight was right there. And I was like, wow, we're going to shock some people. I just believed it. And, um, so then the Wednesday, so then Thursday I get, uh, so I get the, the shaker gave us a, you know, a check for like incidentals and stuff, you know, and I went and picked that up and I remember I put it in the bank and I was driving back from the bank and I get a call from the AD like, well, it's, you know, so it was like noon. I was like 11 o'clock cause I was driving to go up to the high school. I was like running a hair to the grocery store and then I was about to, I was loading <laughs> stuff up and I was driving to the high school to go pick, them up and uh i got the call like it you know like 11 o'clock noon or whatever what'd you say to the yeah, kid? Was, what'd you say to the kid we, we text a little bit because it was hard for me to you know i just because at that point it was postponed yeah so so then i just said well but when i said that I put postponed in quotes because when I, when I thought it was postponed, I didn't believe. I just, I was like, how are they going to figure out how to do this two weeks from now, a month from now, whatever. And then all he texted me back was, wow. And then he texted me back saying, well, can I eat then? <laughs> <laughs> at, hey, at, the said, district, yeah. at the district, you guys did, did you didn't get the Russell Patty Gallagher, did you? No, no, no. We got upset in the quarters by not getting taken down and the kid kind of uh, playing the edge and uh, a ref letting, you know, he, he did the uh, the uh, Priscilla. So he, so he. Oh, the side hooked, headline? He hooked, yeah, so he hooked Najee's back leg, which the ref didn't see, and then, and then did this thing around the neck and just sat on it for 30 seconds. So, you know, ref didn't. I'm just sitting like, what are you supposed to? I mean, that's a, it's a stall. It was at least a stalemate it's a couple times. You know, yeah, crazy. it's a stall though. But was it the kid from Savannah? Danny, was it Danny, Liber? Danny played the edge. Yeah. Was it Liber from Northview? No, no, no. It was uh, Jackson from Lakewood. And then did you get to wrestle him again? No, he lost in the semis and lost three in a row. He lost three in a row. Didn't make it. He took sixth. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Took sixth. Yeah. So you guys took third. And then we went out opposite direction. We had I was going to say you were opposite up. of Patty, right? Yeah, like opposite of Patty. So it was like, uh, it was because uh, the, the, the Jackson thing was, it was frustrating because Najee, like that Friday night, he didn't eat anything after weigh-ins either. Like he ate a little bit and he weighed, I was like, and I could tell in overtime, he just didn't have the push on his double leg that he normally does. So when he weighed out, he weighed out at 62 point, like he weighed out, you know, he's weighed out at 62.8 or something like that, like 0.2, like he was 0.8 under was, of what yeah. he had. He wasn't at the weight. He was under a little bit. Yeah. I'm when like, you're cutting a bunch like, of weight, you don't want to be eight tenths under. You want to be right on. Yeah. Or you could be a pound over and run for 20 minutes and be done with it. Like yeah. that's when you're better, that's what you do. So, um. I could tell. We could tell the way he wrestled, too, that he didn't eat. Like, me and Marcel, whenever we, he's like, he came up, he's like, he ain't it. Marcel always comes up, he's like, he didn't eat, you know? And you could tell. 
You can tell. How about Marcel Clapton? I like that dude. He's a good dude. He was was he a state runner up for you? Yeah, yeah. And then Najee he, was a runner up last year at seventy, right? To Carson. Yeah, yeah. To Carsola, right? Yep. And it wasn't that was, what right? And then who it was? It was Carson, wasn't it? Carson, yeah, yeah. It was that close. Was the, it wasn't a bad match either, um, right? Say that again. It, wasn't a, it was a close match, though, right? It wasn't like you got your doors. No, blown well, up. he lost. It was. It wound up being seven-one because it was five-one late, and then Najee tried another shot or something. They tried kind of and got taken down late. Um, it was. It was the first time I was like, "Yeah, we're just not beating this kid," you know. Like I, I saw that, but in my opinion, if you know, if Najee was with me for throughout. You know, from eight, not like, I, I just, I know there's been more there. I know there's more that I could have given. It, it was just, you know, it's just the high school time was, was kind of short. So you lost him so for was, two years, right? He went two years. He yeah, went to like, Ignatius. Yeah. It was like eight, nine, ten. Oh, you lost him for three years. Well, actually it was kind of like four because he would kind of come back and forth in seventh grade and then eighth. He came back for a second. We thought you saw, remember when we were at, uh, when Farouk won, uh, he was seventh grade, like when Farouk won junior high, he was in seventh. Okay. And I thought, I thought he was going to be back and then, then he was gone and then that was, that was it. And then, then, then I get a call that he's coming back and then here we are. From the outside looking in, Will, it didn't look like you had a hard time re- repairing the relationship with him. It felt like you like trusted the kid and it looked like the kid trusted you. It didn't feel like it was like this huge amount of distrust for one another. And it looks like you guys just picked up right where you left off when he was in middle school. Would you say that's accurate? Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, I got it. I mean, me and him have been through a lot of stuff. Just all like just a frustration of him trying to win youth state championships. He had a tough time getting that done. And, and uh, but I, you know, I knew I believed in his talent, but I always knew that there was things that he had to work on. And uh, those were the things I was always looking on, like, long-term with him. And that was probably some of the frustration and kind of what people – people were probably making promises to him. People were saying, hey, we can get you better now. We can do this now. And I just – everything was – you know, he told me he wanted to go to Stanford or, like, he wanted to wrestle deep. Like, he would tell me – and that's – I was like, okay, well, let's work on that when I'm talking to an 11-year-old, 12-year-old. You know, like, let's work on your law. I didn't worry about, like – the short term, and that's what people can people kind of use that against you sometimes. So I just said, "All right, it's just what it is." But uh, it's it's very interesting. Everyone can't do the Steber route, right? Like Steber hit the peak and stayed at it. You know, like how many people have done that? Yeah, but you're but, like <laughs> you you of all people, you're the late bloomer of late bloomers. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when I talk to oh, you, yeah. you're, you're like you're the definition of late bloomer. You know what I mean? Like never made a state tournament, but you qualified for an NCAA tournament. That hasn't happened much. Yeah. I don't know if you know that. That probably hasn't happened a whole lot. I can't no, think of another guy. Can... Olympic... Yeah, and I wrestled in Olympic trials in 2000 as well. Yeah, so it's like you're the, the late bloomer of late bloomers, but obviously Stever, he's the opposite end of the, the spectrum from oh. Will Knight. Yeah, um, yeah. When you look at um, you know where we're going right now, our society is completely changing. Um, dude, I don't even know what the new normal is. Um I was talking to T- T- Tim Foley, you know, T.R. Foley, he he, he uh, works for UWW, uh, he does fr- fr- Foley's Friday Mailbag. I would probably know if I saw yeah, him. Yeah, you'd know him if you saw him. Anyway, I was talking to Tim Foley, and he lives in Manhattan. Okay. Like oh, just, my. J- like Chelsea, like Manhattan, Chelsea area. Yeah. And that was that's the epicenter of this whole outbreak right now yeah, in America. Yeah. And it's a very international city. Obviously, it's New York. New York City's New York City. It's it's the center of cultural humans. I think, in my opinion, I was I was supposed to be there last week. That was going to be my first quick getaway after the state tournament. I was supposed to be in Brooklyn with my buddy. So, and it's five boroughs, and they're all on top of each other, and population density is at its max in that city. Um, but he's like, I don't even know what a lot of this is going to look like after this. Will, what, and I know you don't might not have the answers. Uh, what is the new normal? What is this going to look like? You know what? You know what I think is going to happen? Like, I've been just being around Shaker, seeing, like, okay, people kind of getting back to, okay, taking care of their houses by themselves and, like, cooking on their own and kind of talking to your neighbors a little bit because you're all kind of outside, socially distanced, but you're kind of talking, oh, I'm talking to my neighbor. It, it felt like last week felt 
like 1983 to me. Like when I walked outside and I saw all these people like, okay, you saw people going to the grocery store and then coming and cooking at their house and people outside and everyone playing and people working on And it was like, not one kid had their phone on. Like it, it was like, it felt like when I was a kid and other than like, I h- hope we can get a little bit more of that. I think that's where we're going to be. Cause I think people might be enjoying it a little bit, at least like being, you know, like, all right, let's get to know our neighbors. Let's cook at the house. Let's not worry. I mean, it's going to hurt some fast food joints, but you know, I mean, like, but you realize how much money you save, like just the things we're doing and how we're living a little bit, slowing it down a little bit. But I think the, uh, as far as wrestling, I think the coach's handshake might have to go away. It does. You know? It does. Like, I was at Perrysburg, and we didn't have a coach's meeting, and that was the beginning of the uh, people start talking about this thing, the pandemic. Okay. And then the coach's meeting, I was going to just suggest, like, maybe we shouldn't do the coaching kid handshake. Let's just eliminate one more handshake. And just, you know, just so we, you know, and, but, I think that's going to have to go. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I've always hated that. <laughs> I, I, just, I loved college I when I didn't have to shake the other coach's hand. I loved it. Yeah, no, they made me do it in high school, and I hated it. And I, I think there was a year I just didn't do it. And then they like yeah, kind of pseudo made it a rule, didn't they? Yeah, no, it's still not a rule, but it's just like coaches have a rule. It's like a coach. Yeah, I, coach just, I just like it so much. Yeah. Oh, you're a genius. Thank you for that. That's just a little thing, but I hate, I hate that. I can't stand it. I know. It. It's going to have to go. It's yeah. have to I'm go. not a fan of that. Thank you. That is a little thing, but thank you. That's a great answer. I appreciate that. Sure. Um, where Will, where are you moving forward as far as, you know, you're talking about doing documentaries, but what else are you doing right now? Um, have you been involved with this Ohio State thing at all, with what's going on? Have you ever have been involved with the, the Doc Strauss thing at all? Yeah, I'm a I'm a big part of uh, of a group, and uh, and I've been doing a lot of behind the scenes work, just getting people to you know I just spend a lot of time just getting people talking to investigators and just getting proper representation and uh, you know just just to, so they so their voice could be heard. Where is the university at? It feels like the university is really dragging their feet on trying to make people whole again or paying people damages. Are you allowed they to talk are. about any of that, or where are they at? Well, th- this is what I can what I can tell you is um, I'm with a group that uh, that's represented by Rocky Ratliff, and uh, and uh, ultimately the thing that I am proud about is you know I talked to over 50 people about this, and it, it gets a little draining, and. Uh, and I know there's controversy between, you know, parties and and things. But one thing is, I still love Ohio State wrestling. And I and, you know, I still would love, a, you know, a relationship with those guys. And, you know, I talk to to Tom and Jay every once in a while. It's still a little, you know, still awkward at times. But I think when I bust their balls on Twitter, I think they think that it's from a negative place, but it's I'm busting Jay Jagger's balls. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I, and, I don't uh, really feel like those guys have any, they, they don't have anything to do with it. I mean, they they just, exactly. They just work for the institution has, that it happened to be where the guy was. I don't think. Yes, it has, they have zero to do with it. And, um, and ultimately, uh, where Ohio State, I think, is dropping the ball as far as when it comes to taking care of these, uh, these things happen and they, the things just weren't right. And the the atmosphere at Larkins Hall, where our training facility, it, it was a gauntlet of, you know, of, you know, like perverts just check, you know, doing just it was just a bad atmosphere. Voyeurism. And, uh, Voyeurism is the word, Will. At, at, the, at the highest level. And you know what I've also learned? We're not alone. It happened at Michigan. I know the voyeurism happened at Penn. I heard a story about pen the voyeurism there wherever there's an open locker room and wrestling there's voyeurism and so uh, this happened at every college where there's an open locker room system and so and, and that's, you had a doctor yeah. on top of that you had a doctor who was using yeah. his position of power 
and calling things yeah. medical exams that weren't really medical exams. Yes. So let me give you this one piece that always people always try and tell. People always ask, why didn't you just kick his ass? Why didn't you just this, right? So what I always, everyone who's talking to us is thinking like a someone that's 40 years old, 45 years old as grownups, right? So all I tell them, I say, well, what if this, and they're normally here because they're telling me they're, they have a son or a daughter. So well, what if that happened to your son? He's going to college next year. The first thing they say, see, they don't, they think of their, they think of it different when you look at it that way. Or, you know, I heard Randleman and I heard Yetz and I, everyone complained all the time and the things didn't happen. What would I look like beating up some old doctor? Like I'd be back home wrestling at Tri-C, you know, like I would have get, I would have got kicked off the team or suspended, you know, kicked out of Ohio State. Because they just uh, they just seemed to kind of cover up for this doctor and kept moving them around. So they just they just kept covering up for this doctor. And people try, you know, like like Russ tried. It just it, it just you know I had um, I had given a you know I had talked to Russ about this about hey when is Doc going to be out of our locker room at least? And then he said I'm working on it. And then our senior year Doc wasn't in our locker room. And there's plenty of things that people tried to do. It, it just it, it just now it just turned ugly and it didn't need to be. And that's what disappoints me about Ohio State, that it, that it just didn't need to be. We could have just worked on this and then, uh, you know, kind of, kind of, I still hope they, I still hope they're ready to make this right because it needs to be done for everyone because I'm sending kids to college, you know, I'm sending kids and I, I couldn't imagine sending, ki sending a kid to a college and this happens to them, you know, they, that would be very, very heartbreaking to me, so. Is your relationship ruined with Russ Hollickson, Jim Jordan? I obviously know you don't like Jim Jordan's politics, but I think you like Jim Jordan as a person. As, as, I think you like Jim Jordan I, as a guy. It, it, Jim's very disappointing to me now, um, up until, you know, two years ago. Like, I, I definitely don't like his politics, but that, that never drove me. Because I talked to him, I would call him. He invited me to the Capitol once. And, you know, whenever I met him, whenever I saw him at the state tournament, I introduced a bunch of inner city kids to Congressman Jim Jordan, who's my wrestling coach. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, cause those kids be like, wow, you know, a Congressman too. Like Willie Knight knows everybody. So yeah. And the, the rust thing with me is not strained, but with everyone else is. And I'm hoping when we get some resolution, I, I, I think, I think I can do some patchwork with some people. I think we could all come together and kind of talk through some things and, 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 kind of try and get back to a little bit of a uh, recon reconciliation, you know? If you look what Michigan State did with, was it uh, Nasser, right? Yeah. Larry Nasser. Um, they paid out a couple hundred million bucks, if you look. Um, yeah, three. That, yeah. it's it's almost like this, uh, Penn State, obviously, right? Yeah. Sandusky. Yeah. Um, it's almost like those places. USC. US, yeah. It's almost like those places are so big, they can't fail. Yeah, and Ohio State, other than the Ivies, can, I mean, they're, they're way, they have way more money than Michigan State and Penn State. <laughs> what is that one? Well, if you look so, at the endowments, yeah, it's, it's the Ivies, and then normally you get into like a public, play, a public unit, because that's, that's, dude, that's why they have a lot of those jobs. In Ohio, yeah, in that, Texas. Their job is to build the endowment. They have a lot. They have thousand people, two thousand people at Ohio State. Their job is literally to build the university's endowment. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. Like that's things that that's things that we learn. Yeah, it's and, crazy. Uh, yeah, right. And then you you learn a lot about what they spend money on and and you and what they do and and you just you at the at the beginning it wasn't about the money for me. It was about it was about trying to people had to be held I, I just wanted people to tell their story so they didn't feel like you know what this happened to me because you don't i mean you don't want to walk around like oh you went to a house state you like you should be able to tell your story as men why can't men tell this story okay and that's uh so that's been kind of the fortunate thing for some some people it, it's like unfortunate things happen to men too not just boys or you know young men 19 year old 18 year olds 20 year olds. Think about it. We coach high school. We're sending kids to these colleges. You know, they should not have to deal with shady doctors and, per and perverse in locker rooms. They just shouldn't have to deal with it. 
I don't. I couldn't agree with you more. I, yeah, I don't know what else to say. They shouldn't yeah. be dealing with that. It's a, th- a thousand percent something they should not be dealing with. Um, yeah, the whole thing is just I, I. I can't honestly wait for it to be over in Ohio State to try and do the right thing, and and they're they're gonna have to pay people. We already know that. They know that. We know that. I don't know why they're delaying it, but hey. Um, maybe they know something you and I don't know. They, I think they're delaying just because they can. You know, I just it, it's it's kind of I mean it's that's why you love them. I mean they're a big arrogant university. It's the big you know they're the biggest you know they they're too big to fail and they're like just showing you why you can. You know they just gotta they gotta let you know it's uh, that we run things we run the state. But uh, like I said, I still cheer for. I still love Ohio State football. I still love Ohio State wrestling. I still would encourage kids to go there, and so that's not even that's not even where I'm at. Uh, Javon Jones was just calling me right there. <laughs> Maybe he's watching. Maybe might be watching. So, um, Will, what else have we missed out on here, man? I, 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 I'm, well, look, I'm an open on. book now, here, tell buddy. Me. I had to talk about that damn bracket. I, okay. <laughs> You were hitting me up on this bracket, and I'm like, dude, I'm not the guy. I was trying to be like as nice about it as I could. I'm like, I'm not the guy. You're the guy. Here's your platform. What was wrong with Ohio State's bracket that Logan Stieber should have won, in my opinion? What was wrong with Ohio State's bracket, the virtual bracket that they did? Go. First of all, you taught me how to tweet, so I'd only know how to at tweet you. So that's why, you know, I got. <laughs> what was I doing? What was I thinking? You talk, but look, man, I love you, brother. So it's it's what it is. It's all it's all love, man. <laughs> You're smashing so, me, and I'm like, well, I, I, come on, man. No, I just wanted other people. I know people follow you, so I'm like, hey, maybe he'll throw some, you know. So look, and it's also about the Twitter sphere, okay? Obviously. First of all, the 90s get so disrespected in the history of Ohio, of Ohio State. It's so disrespected. Okay. Now, our group was just an underachieving, an overachieving group of low, non-recruits walk-ons, and we kept Ohio State freaking wrestling going. And coincidentally, we got them that new damn facility. So let me just throw that out there. Okay. We got your ironwood. But anyway, so... So look what happens. First of all, the criteria for being in the tournament is flawed, okay? There's no way Vinyasi Yetz and Eric Smith are not on that bracket. Just people that win and they're just amazing people. All right, there's people that are in the bracket that shouldn't be. The C's were all wrong. The C's were all wrong. Why? Only, why? Why? Tell only, me why. Wait, only, okay. So Vinyasi Yetz, Eric Smith, one, all, one time All-American, third, and the other guy was uh, one time or two times? Two-time All-American. So we got a two-timer and we got a one-timer. Okay. Who was in over those two who shouldn't have been? That's the Big Ten champ and beat Darrell Weber in the Big Ten Finals. Okay. Who was in over them? Give me two guys. I'm just saying. I'm just saying they should have been in the tournament. So I'm just moving on. Like, but I'm gonna tell you some of the other flaws. Okay. All right. So look, the seeds were all wrong. First of all, Kevin Randleman should have been the number two seed or the number three. He shouldn't have been the four. He should have been the three seed. Point blank. Okay. If Kevin Randleman would have wrestled a fourth year, he's the one or the two seed, in my opinion. Yeah. Now he he should be one, two, or the three. He should have been the two, but he's. I, but for for this new young Twitterers, you know that they only think wrestling's only been around for ten years, <laughs> which shows in this tournament. And it's like you could tell. It's the it's so. And Tommy should have been a four, and Jay Jagger should have been a five. Okay. All right. Rex Holman and Mitch Clark should have been both higher. OK, I believe. Rex Holman. When undefeated his senior year. Big Ten champ, he was the two time Big Ten champ. And he lost in the semifinals, got upset in the semifinals junior year. But. The following year, he's undefeated. Like just being a nine is insulting. He got he got upset and cradled in the semifinals by Mark Kerr. Hold on. Hold exactly. on. Who, That's what I mean. Who The yeah. Rock is going to play in a movie coming up. You know that, right? You see what I'm saying? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Right? Look who he lost. He lost to Mark Kerr 
He got caught in the cradle by Mark Kerr. He was winning. Okay. You know he was winning and yeah. he just got cradled. Yeah. Dude, it was like the last second, one and two. It was like. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> so, so, same thing. Like, Mitch has the most dominating performance in NCAA history. Tech Finals. falling in the first. Finals, period. It's finals. Finals, period. Most dominant. So, okay. That's your eight and nine seed. All right? So, my main beef is thinking this. There's only two people that I can look at that could, quote unquote, beat Logan Stever in this thing. And it's just more of thinking if, when it really comes down to the two things that people like the wrestling or the popularity. There was no person ever more popular during their time wrestling, than Kevin Randall, okay? So, he is a three-time Big Ten champ, two-time national champ, runner-up, left his senior year like a great tailback would leave. It just was his time to go. I think part of the frustration with our facility and with our doctor had to do with that. I can't tell you he's not around to tell us that, okay? So, say if he, now, at the NCAA tournament, Kevin Randleman is the only person that they stopped the tournament for to watch him do his leaps. They stopped the tournament his senior year, or his junior year at Ames, Iowa. They said, everyone, pay attention to mat number four while Kevin Randleman is up. And then everyone cheered as he did. Everyone yelled, one, two, because he did three leaps and then went and wrestled people. He wrestled after he, he, he separated he dislocated his jaw, practicing with Rex Holman, going into Big Tens. Wrestled with a separated jaw, won Big Tens. Ray Brinzer knew that and was trying those front headlocks and try and tried to, you know, mess with his front head. People started knowing he had a separated jaw. So with point in the quarterfinals at Nat, he's wrestling a guy. His jaw goes out, okay? Jaw goes out. Trainer comes out, doesn't. Gets, pushes him out the way. Coleman comes out. He pushes him and Russ out of the way. He goes in the middle of that, slams his jaw back into place, and goes on the line. I've never seen a man do such a thing. And the guy that was wrestling him saw, I am not winning this match after that. He goes on and wins that national championship. No one's ever done that. And my other thing is, I would love to see a match between prime Jay Jaggers at Nationals and Logan Stever at the moment. OK, because the only thing that could beat someone like Logan is a Jay Jaggers type of cradle. That would be the only thing. Like, I would love to see that match. Like, wow, this might be a one guy that could catch him. I don't think he's beating him, but that's what I'm saying. That's why I give Jay a higher seed and I like him to get to a semifinal against Logan Stever. I have I will have Stever against Jay Jaggers in that semi and I will have Randleman versus Snyder in that semi. And as you know, Random is doing three leaps and beating beating Snyder. <laughs> he's, he's, he's too prime time. He was too prime time. And that's what Jay that's what I like about Jay Jaggers too. They're so prime time. So that would be some great semis. And I will have, you know, the Logan and Randleman, you know, I I love them both. They're my two favorite people. So, you know, I I just I'm gonna give love to, to Stever beating Randleman in the finals. Okay. Mark Coleman was only a Buckeye. He was, was he only a one-time All-American at Ohio State? Because he was fourth at Miami and yeah. a champ for Ohio State, right? Yeah. And he, he transferred, yeah, and then he was uh, So that's why they can't – I don't think you could do much with Mark uh, Coleman on it. Yeah, I, out of respect, I would because I saw what he, he was and what he did. Um, but you get my point, right? And like, just – As a Buckeye. No, totally. Like uh, – that's what I'm saying. Like I would have had him as more of that nine, eight seed. Like I said, I would have moved up Mitch, and I would have like that. Like those of those one timers, those seeds are tough. Uh, but uh, but like like Miles Martin, like I like what he did. But you know, there's some big matches that he lost. You know, like he, you know, he had his kryptonite in Bo Nickel. You know, like Randleman didn't have any kryptonite. He didn't have kryptonite. Like. He it, it's won so, after he got chin whipped. He won the next year. Was Ryland at the weight or was it Chalcevic then? No, Ra Ryland, Ryland was at 167 
where Randall and his cousin won it. Oh, boy, from Purdue. Oh, Charlie Jones. Charlie Jones. And then Charlie Jones, uh, I don't know what happened to Ryland that year. Cause I, I think I, he got, like, fifth. I think he got, Ryland, like, fifth. He lo- yeah, he, like, lost in the Sims and fell apart. Yeah, he like got, that. like, yeah. fifth. Um, okay. Yeah. What else? Hold on. We're, I'm not letting you off the hook. What else about this bracket, this virtual Twitter bracket, made you mad? And what what is there anything oh, so the else? Bracket, so think about this. Think about it. look. We love okay. First of all, Random hasn't lost two matches since he was a sophomore in high school at a tournament. So how does he lose? How does he lose two? He loses to Tomasello twice. <laughs> like like. Maybe he like, gassed him out. Maybe he dislocated his jaw. I don't know. What do you want from me? On. What do you want from me? I don't know. I was like, look, once again, I love my man Tom. I love Tom himself. Randall was a three-time Big Ten champ as well. He was a three-time Big Ten champ. Nato was a four-time. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Random and, random and didn't wrestle his senior year. Okay. He didn't wrestle his senior year. Nathan did. He would have won he would have won it, and he would have beat Les Gutches and been champ, national champ again. That's just what Randleman does. <laughs> That's what he does. Okay. So it sounds like your real big gripe here is the whole – it's the overall positioning of the bracket, but the the, the, the shade and disrespect thrown to Kevin Randleman. I think that that – I think that's what I'm finding out, just judging by your shirt as well. It's, hey, look. Look, this was a rudest Twitter tournament, man. <laughs> rudest Twitter tournament. People like it was very rudest. It was very rudest friendly and Twitter friendly. Young I don't people. even know what to say to you right now. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. All I know is you just kept you kept coming at me, and I'm like, dude, I I don't know what you want. I'm not the guy. I don't know. Maybe maybe some other. There's like these guys on Twitter who are like, there's one guy he hates Kyle Snyder. He only calls him Benedict Snyder. Yeah, come on, man. Dan, Dan, Dan. Only he's like, yeah, oh, Benedict this and Benedict because he's a yeah, traitor no, like okay. Benedict Arnold, and I'm like. Come on, man. Kyle Snyder is no. still pretty freaking good. I know. If he if he left, I can understand if he left Ohio State while yeah, he was he there. Yeah, le- he left the club. He left the RTC, exactly. man. Like, Come people on. Leave, people he won an Olympic leave. gold medal there. What do you want? Exactly. Like, what, what do you what want? No, that, that's, that's, that's not criteria at all with me, man. So no, he, listen, so let me think about this. Kyle Snyder's greatest accomplishments were with the Ohio State University – and they were with the Ohio RTC. He, yeah. And he really hasn't had the chance yet with the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. Apparently next year in Tokyo 2021, we're going to see that. Or we aren't. Yeah. Or but we like, are. it's know. like, dude, when someone does that, it's like, should the Patriots be mad at Tom Brady Tom if he goes Brady? and wins yeah, in Tampa? <laughs> Come on. Like, that's ridiculous. That's, that is... That's just what you're up against with Ohio State fans, though. Yeah. That's and I like Dan. I like Dan. I like Dan, but he like he, he hates Kyle Snyder, and I'm like Kyle Snyder's a good dude. Kyle That's Snyder's a good dude. I can't tell you one bad thing about him. Every time he goes out, I want to see him win. You know, unless he's you know wrestling a, another American or what. I mean, that, then at that point, I just I hope. But he wrestles a foreigner. I want him winning a hundred out of a hundred times. Exactly, exactly. So, and also, I got a question for you. Go. What's up with the boy from Pennsylvania, Willie Saylor, who thinks like everything begins and ends with Pennsylvania wrestling? It's a gimmick, I think. It's a gimmick to a degree. And <laughs> um, Pennsylvania wrestling is the best. They're the deepest. The data shows it. Um, the data. No, but you know what? You know what? Also, though, college wrestling is geared towards Pennsylvania style wrestling. Agreed. It, Agreed. Okay. Because so, it's cultural then, with the mat riding. Yeah, and and also if you look at a ridiculous rule, the fact that if a guy has double boots and the guy has your wrists, and then the guy on bottom stalling, like that is ridiculous. But anyway, that's a whole another conversation for when we create our podcast. There's and nothing wrong with Willie Saylor. He's just a little nuts. He no, no, the, no, 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 no. He I, likes I'm the good. Bud Heavy. He, he likes the Budweiser. I'm glad. I want people to have fun. But the thing I'm calling him out about is let me like wait till I put this Ohio team together. The great Ohio team. I'll put that against anybody. Our second team might be Pennsylvania, bro. Well, wait, the thing wait, you got going question. with the Ohio team is you can put Lee Kemp on the team. Of course, he's on the team. I mean, you can put Lee Kemp on the team. You can put Malika on the team. 
I mean, there's it's just... not even look, dude. I'm telling you, look at the look. There's a guy named Sean Garrett, Garrett from Shaw High, is a two-time national champ at Oklahoma. Ask ask Jamie Milkovich about it. Well, then look, you can people... put you can put what you you got to pick the Milkovich you want to put on there. I think Milkovich you put Tom. Doesn't make this team. He doesn't make the. Uh, he doesn't make this team. This I think you put Tom. I think Tom's the best Milkovich, but a lot of people would say it's Pat. He he is, but a Milkovich isn't going to make this team. That's insane. For, if, if I'm talking about, I'm talking about for the team that became college wrestlers, the team. Yeah, college, yeah, yeah. Like, I get what you're saying. Like I'm telling you, Jim Jim Jordan might not be on this team. Uh, Alan Free's going to have a tough time starting on this team. That's a pretty good team. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right. Now, look at like Steve Luke might not start. Yeah. Right? Because cause it's, it's either Lee Kep or Alan Free, bro. Right? Wait, and then you got Haskett. You got, there's a lot of Haskett, guys. Malika, Haskett. Pasolo might, Pasolo's not going to make the team. Yeah, think about it. Right? Look, you can have, then you got, think, think about your ending. You got Haskett, Malika, Randleman, uh, uh, Rex Holman, Tommy Rollins. Yeah. Come anyway. on now. But then you're you're leaving out like Greg like, like Greg Wojciechowski from Toledo. That's what I'm saying. Like you're, I'm leaving out a Heffernan. I'm leaving. Yeah. Like, I mean, look, these are seconds. Like it, it rotates. They're all in the workout room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're gonna have a squad too. And he's got. You know, I mean, he's gonna have like Jack Kuvo on his team. Kerry Colat's okay. gonna be on his team. Yeah. Okay. Um. You know. I mean, their team is gonna be. I mean, dude, PA is just. We got you. We got you. You can try and put the Hughes on there, but their college year was not that great. Yeah, you can put the Altons on there. Yeah. We can put the Altons. Hey, remember. Nah, the, Al- T- the, Altons, the Altons aren't even honorable Dave mention. Taylor, Dave Taylor's on our team, too. Remember that. It's Dave Taylor's on our team. You're right. You're right. Listen, I'm telling you, this list is it's crazy. Hey, Steve St. John might not start on this team, bro. Yeah. I mean, Dan St. Dan St. John, two-time national champ. Yeah, I mean, we got a pretty good team. I, I would agree with you. Told you. Our, se- our second team. Let's start with our second team and see if they can hang with it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get them started. Okay, okay. i got to go watch a movie All with right. my wife. Do you got anything else for me? Any, any airing of grievances? No. We, Zab, you know, I want to punch you in the that, face I next time I see look, you. Man. This is what we're about to do. Me and you. There's two things. There's two projects we got to do. We're going to do this wrestling podcast together. Let's do a wrestling podcast again. Or be involved in the one I do. I could probably be a guest on your podcast every now and again. Yes, do that. Okay. And I'm doing this document on the history, and I want you to be a part of it. I'm doing this document on the history of Ohio high school wrestling. I need well, you to you, be involved. You know that if it's from 2008 to now, you can just use my footage too, right? You know that. that that's what I want. That's what I, I, But I want to talk about the old school and then kind of how wrestling is being talked about now. And you're pretty important to me. That's what I'm saying. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. All right. You got anything else for me? You're going to yell at me right. about anything else? You're going to you're gonna get on and you forgot to talk about you this? Know I'm a tweet. You know I'm going to tweet you soon about something, brother. It's all right. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank you for the time, Will. Stick yeah. around real quick. I'll talk to you afterwards. Let me cut this live feed, all right? All right, brother. All right. The live feed is cut.